Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you some Gatorade that really doesn't like light. For example, I have here some purple Gatorade, but watch what happens when I shine a bright light on it. It's not blue anymore. <laughs> But then if you turn off the light and wait a bit, it turns back purple again. Or if you want it half and half, you can just split it in half like this. We can do this as many times as you want. The reason this is happening is because this isn't actually Gatorade. I have a dye in here called thionin, and I also have some iron 2 plus ions. These two can react together to make leukothionin and iron 3 plus, but they won't react spontaneously. In order to do that, we have to add some energy. Then the reaction will spontaneously occur, and we can add energy in the form of visible light. So as soon as I shine my flashlight on the solution, it turns clear because leukothionin is colorless. Almost any wavelength of light works for this, but the closer it is to yellow light, the better it'll work. That's because the absorption spectrum of thionin looks like this. You can see that the maximum absorption is right around the yellow wavelength of light, but there's still some absorption in the green. So that means if I have just a really bright green light, I can get this to react as well. So let's put some in a Petri dish and shine my bright green laser on it. You can see that I can draw on the liquid. Wherever I shine the bright laser light, the color disappears. This is called reverse photo bleaching, and it's almost completely reversible, but not quite. Without oxygen, it's completely reversible, but because there's some oxygen in the air, the dyes oxidize a little bit by the oxygen. This reaction is so cool how you can just split the color of a liquid in half. <laughs> it's only half clear. This is one of my favorite reactions, but my other favorite reaction is what our sponsor, Climeworks, can do with CO2. Climeworks directly captures CO2 from the air with a filter. Then the filter's heated and the CO2 comes off and it's added to water and pumped underground. Their plant's located in Iceland and there happens to be an enormous amount of basalt deep underground in Iceland. This basalt acts like a sponge for the CO2 and after a few years it locks in the CO2 as a mineral in the rock. And although there are a lot of different places that this could work, I learned that there's enough basalt in Iceland alone to store the entire planet's excess CO2. Climeworks is really cool because the world isn't going to stop using fossil fuels anytime soon, so CO2 capture like this from Climeworks will become essential in limiting climate change. So if you want to do your part to reduce CO2, you can subscribe to a monthly or yearly plan and they'll actually remove CO2 in your name. Climate action starts at just $1 and onwards so everyone can participate. Remember that a small shift in our perspective can actually make a big difference in starting to scale solutions today. So if you want to start removing CO2 today, head to atnow.climeworks.com slash action lab. And thanks again for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.